Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Conversations with Shauna Show. We're coming live tonight because my lovely guest um, has a day job. So this worked out perfect for her because she's so fascinating, and I'm so excited to have her here today. And so for those of you who are watching us live, say hi so we can say hi back. And if you're on the replay, give us the hashtag replay so we can say hi later. And those of you that are coming in from the Powerhouse Women group, just click the StreamYard link above so we can see your lovely face in your comments. And for those of you who have not met me, my name is Shauna Roche and I'm a transformational coach. And I work with my clients to help them through fear, doubt and uncertainty into love, expansion and possibilities. So with having said that, I won't keep you any longer and I will introduce you to the lovely Amy Hutton. Welcome, Amy. Hello. How are you? I'm doing wonderful tonight. How are you doing? Good. I'm really good. I am so excited to have you here. And I just, oh, I have to, so I have to introduce you because I'm just blown away. Like I'm so blown away by, by just who you are, my dear, and everything you represent and your life. So Amy is from Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Um, and Amy has 20 years experience in the field of working with youth and dealing with bullying and abuse. In elementary school, she was severely teased and bullied between grades three and eight, including being physically and physically assaulted in grade seven by a group of older girls in a locker room. Oh my goodness. In high school, a teacher used his power position and authority to exclude and tear her down instead of supporting and lifting her up to succeed. As past leadership has failed her throughout her school years, she has now turned her experiences and intention to helping educators. As a youth diversity advisor and international speaker slash facilitator, Amy is in the process of designing a corporate training for educators. Oh my God, I love it. <laughs> and um, for educators called the four pillars of facilitating safe spaces for young female students in school. Amy has also, pro also provides workshops and talks to junior and senior high school students on the importance of flattening the curve of bullying. Amy sits on the board of the National Network for Mental Health Alliance representing the province of Alberta. Wow, I love that. And is a member of the Gender and Sexual Diversity Advisory Board with the Calgary Police Service. <laughs> wow, hello Amy, like, hello. <laughs> Hello, Heather. Hello, Haroi. Oh my God. I, I just, this is so amazing because our topic tonight is resilience in the face of childhood bullying. And we were just talking about this because this is, this is such an important topic. And people would think now that, you know, with, and it's, it's worse now because of social media, like so much worse. So let's just dive in. So one of my questions we were, for you is what can the parents, uh, um, what parents can watch for at home for the signs of bullying? <clears throat> yes, there are many signs and they're very subtle at times too. So for example, if your daughter comes home from school and she like throws her backpack down in the hallway and tears upstairs or to her bedroom and like shuts the door and stays there, something happened at school. Something. You don't know what? something happened at school though. The other thing too is she'll continue to, I, and I use the word she because that's my, my demographic. However, it goes for both boys and girls. She will isolate herself in her room even more. She will want not to be out in your house a lot of the time. She'll want to stay by herself. She'll say everything's fine. She won't want to talk about it. Mm -hmm. And something else to watch for is, you know, she doesn't bring friends over. She mm -hmm. doesn't go to friends' houses. She, you know, does, I'm just thinking of my own, what I went through and my signs and symptoms that I went with. Mm -hmm. And, you know, yeah, I didn't really have friends over in my grade. I did have a best friend a year ahead of me. So, yeah, we connected. We shared a lot. Yet, you know, I didn't have the girls over for a play date or, you know, whatever the wording is. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I think wasn't invited to parties. I wasn't invited 
out to places. And if you want to take it a step further of bullying and what also to watch for would be your daughter wearing long sleeve shirts, even in the middle of a heat wave, because there's a good potential and this is going to be dark sounding. Yet there's a really good potential that your daughter is cutting herself or self harming herself, that things are getting really worse. Now I, fortunately didn't go that route because I had external um, places to be. Like I was in girl guides and I was in the dance and I was involved in swimming lessons. So I had outs and I had places to express my energy, express myself and actually get support um, through Pathfinders. So those are some things to watch for. And, and I know the teenage years are really tough. Now I'm not a parent. I want to say that as well. However, my friends who are parents, they said, yeah, the teenage years are tough and they can be tough. And a way to work around it is start communicating, talking with them before the teenage years come into play. So talking about, you know, going around the table at, if you eat dinner together, or in my case, my family, a lot of the time we ate breakfast together because we were going in five different directions after school or after work for my parents. And so around the table, share, you know, what are you proud of today? Mm -hmm. What's something you've done that you're looking for? Or what's something you're doing that you're looking forward to today? Example of eating breakfast. Mm -hmm. And just get that communication starting to flow already. Mm -hmm. And with kids, when I do workshops, a lot of the work I do is actually um, drawing and drawing pictures and kids journal a lot by drawing or doodling. So having resources and just, you know, a notebook. I had a friend of mine that she shared a notebook with her child and mm -hmm. they would be like letters back and forth to each other or notes back and forth. And um, my friend who's the mom was like, that was really powerful because, you know, my child can write something down or draw a picture of something yet not maybe able to voice it. So those are some, actually answered two questions in one, what to watch for, but then an idea of how to help as well. Yeah, because that was one of the other things too, right? right? What to do to engage with your child, um, to engage what is going on and empower your child. Because, yeah. um, and I don't know a lot about this topic, you're the expert, <laughs> but um, you had mentioned something that, that I literally just kind of brought shivers to my body was um, the long sleeves and the cutting because I had never even heard of that before. And mm -hmm. I heard of it, um, I think it was last summer, the girlfriend of mine who has teenage boys, um, her boys didn't don't do it, but she was talking about this is what is happening now and the different things and I don't have children. So I was just like, I was blown away by that. And so I imagine that if you're being bullied so bad in school that when you do these things, because you're, you're, you're not communicating with your parents because you're probably too embarrassed and you're hiding it. Is that what happens yes. to the child? Yeah, I, for me, speaking of my own story, I didn't tell my parents that I was yeah. being bullied. Yeah. I think they had a really good idea that something was going on, mm -hmm. yet, we didn't have any conversations. The closest we got was, um, you know, mom and dad saying, just keep doing your best and keep putting one foot in front of the other. And because I remember probably grade seven or maybe grade eight asking about being transferred to a different school. And I was told, no, they're mm -hmm. like, no, we're going to, you're going to get through the year. You're going to get through it and graduate. So it must've been going grade seven, going into grade eight, because I knew I'm like, because the, the situation I experienced in grade seven in the girls' locker room terrified me. And like my walking on eggshells for a year, well, you know, the grade eight year and the rest of grade seven, that I didn't change in the locker room with the girls. I changed in the bathroom. I ate by myself. Or if I was in a room where everybody else was, I ate in a corner. Like I didn't surround myself with the other kids in my class because I was so afraid of being grabbed. And what the story or what happened is it was gym time and I was in the locker room 
and a girl came up behind me and grabbed me by my bra strap and flung me around the locker room and then let go and I went flying into a cubby. Ooh. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And the teachers didn't step in to help. Now they should have really stepped in in grade three and grade four when it was just name calling. Like mm -hmm. I was called names like stupid, ugly, dumb, retarded, and a loser for six years by oh, kids. Man. And the teachers never stepped in. And I find it really fascinating too, Shauna, right now, after in Facebook land, when I posted that wonderful new bio, mm -hmm. I actually had, and it, this brings shivers to me, I actually am connected with a few of my teachers from my grade years. And my grade six teacher wrote to me and she yes. goes, Amy, I had no idea that you were experiencing that. And it makes me emotional because she's like, I'm sorry, I wish I had known and I wish I had done something. Yeah. So that's why my focus is working with educators on here's some things to look for. Here's ways to engage your classroom because virtually or in person, like the social and emotional health of kids right now mm -hmm. are so important. Plus the teachers. I read a stat the other day and it's on par that teacher's stress level and anxiety level right now is on par with nurses at roughly 46%. Wow. So, yeah, so to look after the teacher's mental health and social and emotional health, then that will all trickle down yeah. to the students. Yes, yes. Oh. I just, I, I, can't, I can't even imagine, like this conversation is just so like, oh, oh my goodness. And um, yeah, just looking back and thinking about the years in school, like I'm, I'm great, I, I am so grateful. I had a brother a year older than me and a brother that's two years older than me. So it was like, and my brothers were very popular in school. And so whether it was grade school or junior high and up into high school, it was like, I had my brothers. And they protected me. So everybody knew, right? Yeah. I was the oldest. I have a younger sister. Yeah. And and that's it. And um, so it was kind of a different yeah. different time. And it was a different time. Like Shauna, you know, I went I was in elementary school and the bullying and everything was happening roughly, you know, nineteen eighty six ish to nineteen ninety one. Roughly. Yeah. yeah. So a different time period because going to school it's oh yeah you'll be teased and picked on this is part of life it's just part of being boy and going to school yeah. but every seven minutes a child is being bullied on the school ground across canada in every school wow. so that's not normal yeah exactly yeah yeah oh my goodness and it, it just what it what it sets them up for life Right. And, and it's then it's like you get to a point where then you seek out for help and, and it's like to coaches and 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 whoever and mentors to help you break down all of that trauma and to work through it all. When, like you said, what you're doing and working with your program and building this beautiful co program to help the educators and help them so then they can go, OK, and, and put a stop to this or at least, you know, I mean, beautifully, it would be nice to put a stop to it all together but yes. um but also just to to make a difference out there and even for parents in the home to open up and have those conversations and i mean during covid this is the time to have those conversations with your children right yeah. and then and to build it's almost a new level of trust i would say with your child Yes. where like having those conversations and and they say like i was just reading some other stuff on the on this eating and this ayurveda health thing i'm doing right now i'm diving into and it's like from six o'clock to like you know 10 p.m or whatever that's your time to connect with your family and that's the time to really sit down and dive in and to have those conversations so so your children do feel safe yes yeah. yes true and i'm gonna throw a curveball at mm -hmm. everyone Mm -hmm. Now, it's something I heard, and at first I didn't agree it, but then I had to sit with it and go, hmm, yeah, okay. And here it is. Bullying doesn't start at school. Bullying starts in the home. Children learn it somewhere. Yeah. They learn it at home. 
Yeah. That, yeah, I haven't thought of it from the bully's perspective. The bully yeah. learns from at home. So then the bully, yeah, because that's exactly it. They're learned behaviors that we then carry on. And I, oh, wow. Yeah, I mean, that, that just opens up a whole other conversation as yeah. well. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I, I, can, I can see comments coming. So if anyone has any questions yeah. or comments, please, um, I'm here to answer to the best of my ability. Yeah, uh, any questions. Having those important conversations, yeah, listening to your child. But that's, yeah, that's a whole other level because with the bullying starting at home and the parents, I mean, there's two sides to this, right? Because mm -hmm. there's going to be the parents that are fully aware of their behavior. And then there might be some situations where they're just inherently that way because their parents were that way. And you know what I mean? It's like, it's like there's these years and years of programming that they might not even realize how they're being because yeah. that's how their parents were and that's how their parents were. That's how everybody was. Cause I know, and I'm just, as I'm saying this, cause it's popping into my head, certain things with my dad, right? And he's like, well, that's what my parents did. And I yeah. think like, you know, it was like he was kicked out of the house at 16. So at 16, I think all three of my brothers were kicked out of the house. Like, it was like, it's like, as soon as you turned 16, it was like, you're going to kick out of the house. It was yeah. like, 17, whatever it was. It was like, because that's the behavior, his learned behavior. So yeah. really, when you look at that, now it's like, yeah, reaching out to those parents and help, helping them with that learned behavior and changing their patterns and their beliefs around that. Yes, so I have a, a brilliant example that I actually witnessed earlier today, this morning. Um, I was out where I was working and I was in a little park and there were two little girls uh, playing. Mom, guess where, guess where or what mom was doing? On her phone? Yes. Yeah. She wasn't engaging with her kids. Mm -hmm. She wasn't playing with her children so a suggestion on how to how to do the communication piece put put the darn phone down or a tablet or whatever it is yeah. and be with your kids and engage with them um and i've seen it you know kids are like mom mom look at me look at me and or dad or or whatever and that's the child trying to say can you please look at me? I, I have something to say. And I heard a beautiful quote years ago, and I want to say it was from Toni Morris, who's an author. Oprah interviewed her, read one of her books years ago. And Toni said, do your eyes light up when the child enters the room? The child and anyone for that matter, like me, you know, going into work, mm -hmm. for example, or, or doing, you know, going out for coffee with a friend. Do your eyes light up when that person enters the room to see you, especially children? Children mm -hmm. don't want to be hearing, oh, your hair's not you know, brushed or your shirt's not tucked in or whatever. They're just like, do you see me? Do my words matter? And are you hearing what I'm saying? And do you love me? That's all kids want. Yes. From home and at school. Oh. Oh my God, that, that just gave me shivers. I'm like, that is, that's it. That's totally it. Oh my gosh. I, and it's so freaking simple. Yeah. I think back to when I was a little girl, what I wanted, I, I just wanted attention for years. I was like, I just want to be loved. I, I just want to be loved. Like, can somebody yeah, see me? I'm here. Can we yeah. talk? Like, I love to talk all the time. And that was just it. It's like, Shauna talks too much. Shauna talks too much. Well, maybe Shauna wants someone to talk to. Like, yeah. I have something to say. Well, you listen to me. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I've seen it over and over and over again and actually happens a lot more than people realize. So here's a, an invitation challenge to your listeners that, you know, in the next 24 hours, when you're out and about, watch how people interact, especially with children. Yeah. And are they on their phone or their tablet or, you know, whatever? Are they actually fully engaging yeah yeah that that makes that makes such a difference because i have to compare it to i look at my younger brother and his wife and they have two 11 year old twins beautiful milan and valentina and they're 11 and um they're not they're my brother and his wife aren't on facebook 
They're not social media people. They live such a pure, beautiful, simple life. And it's like the conversations with the family and it is the kids don't have phones either. So it's like the conversations around the dinner table and how did it, it's like sitting and talking to these little adults. I just love talking to them because it's so fascinating the conversations we have with them and they know how to interact and have those conversations. And it's like, there's some conversations that I was like, how would I look at my brother? I'm like, mom and dad would have never talked to us like, like about that stuff. And Darren's yeah. like, if they ask, we talk about it. We don't, we don't, we just talk it. We have the conversation. And he's like, we have the conversation about this. We have a conversation about that. And it's just, it's so beautiful to see this family unit. And I mean, I love them dearly. I only get to see them usually a couple of times a year, but I just love seeing when they come together. And I'm like, for me, I'm like, this is the epitome of a perfect family kind of thing, right? Like they got, everybody has their ups and downs, but just seeing how they communicate as a family, it's just, it's so beautiful. And I look at those little kids and how, how they're going to, how I see them, I can just see how they're going to grow up to be these amazing adults because you know, they're confident, they're, they have the conversations with their parents. It's like, such a huge difference. And I bet they're making eye contact. Yeah. 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 Like they literally, like we were doing a little painting thing at my house. And we were painting all these glasses and doing fun painting things. And we were having a conversation. And then we just kind of, at one point, everybody put everything down. And we were just listening to my nephew. And we're all like, wow. You know, like we were totally engaged. And same thing with my niece, right? It's like, yeah. it was just, yeah, it was, yeah. It's, it's such a different level. And it's so simple. It is. And that's like when I do workshops for the girls in junior high, senior high, what I'm teaching is so wonderfully simple that even when I've done it for a group of sparks, which in girl guides, they're five and six years old, they get it. Like they understand. And um, I was doing a workshop for a group of brownies a couple years ago now, and brownies are seven, eight years old. And I checked in with the brown owl a week or two later and she goes, Amy, you'll never guess what happened. I'm like, oh, what? Tell me. <laughs> and it was that the brownie went home that night and taught her sister, who was a spark, one of the techniques. Like it's oh, that simple. That's so awesome. Yeah. So it works for like, yes, I target the junior high, senior high, because that's yeah. my demographic. But like, you know, if anyone out there wants a workshop for girls who are younger than that, yes, I will do it. Uh, just message me and we'll talk. Yeah. yeah, I love, oh, your work is so beautiful and so needed. I love that you're doing these workshops with these girls at that age, at the different ages, because it's so, oh my God, like, it's so important. I'm just like, I'm just like, <laughs> yeah. And then the best, the other, but one of the other best parts is that the leaders or the guiders sitting at the back of the room or in the circle, depending on, you know, whatever's going on, they're like, that's so easy. What I need to do that with my husband or I need to, do that with yeah. because the, the yeah. one tool, yeah. The one tool I teach is all about communication. When you're not understanding something, how do you like clarify? How do you ask for assistance? And um, it's the word salt. And it stands for stop, ask, listen, talk. Oh, I love that. Wow. So it can it can be used with bullying, obviously, like how to stop a bully in their tracks is turn them around and ask a question. Like stop what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Ask a question. Why did you think, why do you, you know, why do you think my shirt is ugly, okay. for example? And listen to what his his or her response is. And then have a dialogue and have a conversation. Oh, wow. Yeah. Something. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That approach. Hmm. That's actually good with adults, too. For sure. Exactly. As I said, that's why when I've done it, the guiders or the leaders of the back of the room or the teachers or whoever are like, we need to do that with our, whoever we live with at home, our partner or, you know, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness, I love that. Mm -hmm. oh, I want to ask you here, we may have touched a bit on it, but it was just another point we had here. So yeah. what can teachers do in the classroom to help with flattening the curve of bullying? Mm, this is one of my favorite topics and, and discussions. And again, it's simple. I'm in a group with um, in Facebook land for a bunch of principals and someone posted, they're like, well, I don't want to teach. I don't want to like learn a whole new curriculum and teach this. I'm like, 
No, it's really simple. So my one suggestion is go around the room at the start of the day in the class and ask your students, what is something you've done today that you're proud of? And then one by one, the kids say what that is, and then they celebrate each other. And it's interesting to see the camaraderie and the connections coming together. I did this when I was a teacher's assistant with kids with disabilities at a school here in Calgary. And I played the song by Heather Small called Proud. Mm -hmm. And then I had the kids one by one tell me what they're proud of that day. And even kids with developmental disabilities got it. And they could tell me something on what they're proud of. So that's the first thing. And the other thing about bullying, and I heard this from somebody, is that hurt people hurt people. Mm. So, so I have a cat and it, she's just, I, don't, I hope you can't hear her, but she's kind nope. of into mischief over there. Uh, <laughs> guys, two seconds. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love it. I was on a Zoom earlier today, and there, there was all of us on this Zoom. There was a bunch of us on the <laughs> and my dog jumped on my lap. Another girl had her dog. Another cat jumped in the camera. It was like all these animals. And I only, like, I've only, I adopted her on September 11th. So we're still in that learning each other phase. Yeah. <laughs> well, good for so, you. So, yes. So, yeah. um, so hurt people hurt people. Yeah. So a way to build up a child's self-esteem is to have them write down what are five things they like about themselves. What are five things they, they, they like that they see because their self-esteem is low. That's a really good reason why kids are bullying each other is because they're not liking what they see of themselves. Yeah, yeah. Oh. So true. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. I and I, I love that the fact that you say when you go around and then they say something that they're proud of or whatever. But then I love the part where you said that everybody else celebrates them. Because yeah. that that I think that that was I'm like in my mind, I'm thinking that's such a key component to bringing everybody together when it's like, okay, celebrating this one and this one and going around and yeah, because then everybody just gets that little bit of like, oh, I'm being celebrated for this, you know? Yeah, and it was really, really cool because the kids, it was a class that went up to grade six or a school that went up to grade six. And I worked with the kids in grade six and for their grade six graduation celebration, they actually marched into the gymnasium to the song Proud by Heather Small. It impacted them that much that when they were asked, what song do you want to walk into? They said, Proud by Heather Small. I love so, it. Yeah. Love it. Aww. Yeah. There's another comment here. Wow, I like the salt method. Yeah. Oh, you're very welcome. <laughs> yes, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Haroi. Wow, I mean, this is just, this has been an amazing conversation. I mean, I, it's it's just and even for someone who doesn't have kids you know it's out there and i have lots of nieces and nephews so it's like it's just something to definitely to watch for and yeah. to be aware of and oh thank you so much for being on here amy is there anything else you would like to add here <laughs> i would love to have my cat stop playing over there but no um i would love to um if there's anyone watching, listening, that is a principal or a PTA or connected to schools in any way and wants to have the conversation of, what do I do? How do I help? How do I help my teachers? How do I help my kids? Because mm -hmm. these simple techniques can be so just integrated into the regular day of class. Yeah. And the four pillars that I'm creating are going to address all of that plus more on helping teachers be able to facilitate these safe spaces because I wish when I was a girl in grade seven after I'd been thrown around the locker room yeah. that I had a safe space to go yeah and I didn't have it and mm -hmm. then in high school again it was 
we had a beautiful, amazing guidance counselors. However, nothing to go to to say, you know, my grade or my grade 13, my OAC biology teacher just told me I won't pass his class because I'm left handed. Wow. Yeah. That's what happened. He excluded me from everything. He's like, you're left handed, you're not going to pass my class. Oh my God. And I had nowhere to go. Wow. So please teachers or educators that are watching, listening or PTA even, please reach out to me. Um, I know you'll probably give my information somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, let's start this conversation because, you know, as I said earlier, one in seven, every seven minutes, a child is being bullied on the school ground. Yeah. And approximately 43% of girls are being cyber harassed and bullied as we speak. That high. Wow. So, so cyber bullying, cyber yeah. harassment is happening yeah. with all the online school going on. Yeah. Wow. That, yeah, that's a whole other thing as well. Yeah. 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 That's the reality. And some people need, yeah, just some direction with all of this. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So thank you. Thank you for having me on. It was wonderful. Yeah. Thank you so much. And we'll I'll get you to stay on Amy, because I'm gonna yeah. get I'm gonna upload all your information in the comments. So thank you so much, everybody, for who's watching us live and on the replay. And I will put Amy's contact information in the comments. So thanks again and have a fabulous Tuesday night, everybody. <laughs> Take thank care. you for watching.